Pastors, I'm going to ask you all to come up uh, up here. Uh, make a way. Pastor Ramirez, if you would, take a, take a seat right here in this chair. It's not a special chair, but it is special when you sit in it. <laughs> yeah, if you want to, you can also head up on the steps to... You can kind of circle around him a bit if uh, getting close is okay, too. All right, so um, as uh, we begin this uh, installation portion of the service, um, what I'm coming to you and acting on behalf of is, is not of the, uh, of the pastor here at Tabor Church, but it's in my position as the circuit visitor of uh, circuit number 11, which... Walter will be a part of, and we've got some, some brothers here as well, at least brother, <laughs> that is a part of circuit, of our circuit. Oh, yeah, Pastor Gomez too, yes. And, uh, and so as, as the circuit visitor, um, I'll be doing and leading this uh, portion of the installation. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Beloved in the Lord, through the church's usual order, the Reverend Walter Ramirez has been called by the Lord of the Church to be the associate pastor here at Tabor Lutheran Church. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your Son, our Savior, you have always given to your church on earth faithful shepherds to guide and feed your flock. Therefore, we pray, make all pastors diligent to preach your holy word and to administer your means of grace and grant your people wisdom to follow in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right, so we are going to hear from the Holy Scriptures what it says concerning this institution of the office of the Holy Ministry. So I'm going to go right here, and we're just going to go through. We're going to start with the first section, which is the institution of the office of Holy Ministry, and we're going to see what the Word of God says about it. Starting first with Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. From John chapter 20, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. And then he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. And now we'll hear from the responsibilities of the office of the Holy Ministry. From John chapter 21, verses 15 to 17. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. From St. Paul's letter to his spiritual son, Timothy, chapter 4, verse 14 and 16. Do not neglect the gift that you have, which is given you by prophecy, when the council of elders laid their hands on you, practice these things. Immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress. Keep close watch on yourself and on your teaching. Persist in this, for by doing so you will both save both yourself and your hearers. From Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4. 
This is how one should regard us, as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found faithful. Letter to Corinthians from Paul, chapter 3, verse 4, 5. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Now that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, but our suffering is from God. Walter, from 2 Timothy, chapter 4. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching, for the time is, for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, Always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangel evangelist, fulfill your ministry. From uh, the book of Ephesians chapter 4, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. And once more from 1 Peter chapter 5, Peter writes, Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. And now we'll hear from the strength and promise in the office of holy ministry. Jesus' own words to you from Matthew chapter 5. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but rather on a stand. And there it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. From Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10, verses 17 and 18. Let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. For it is not the one who commends himself who is approved, but the one whom the Lord commends. From Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 and following, Paul writes, but, but as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you have learned it, and how from a childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Pastor Ramirez, if please stand, we'll ask you now. Dear brother in Christ, the Lord grant that you receive and keep these words in your heart so that you may be strengthened and encouraged in your labors. God gathers his church by and around his holy gospel and therefore also grants its growth and increase according to his good pleasure. That this may be done, he has established the office of holy ministry into which you have been called by the church and have been ordained and consecrated by prayer and the laying on of hands. It is fitting that you should gain, acknowledge the responsibilities of this holy office in which you are to serve as a pastor of this congregation. So in the presence of this congregation and before our Lord God, to whom you must give an account now and at the last day, 
I now ask you, do you acknowledge that the Lord has called you through his church into the ministry of word and sacrament? I do. Do you believe and confess the canonical books of the Old and New Testaments to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice? Yes, I believe and confess the canonical scriptures to be inspired word of God and the holy infallible rule of faith and practice. Do you believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds, namely the Apostles, Nicene, the Athanasian creeds, as faithful testimonies to the truth of the Holy Scriptures? And do you reject all the errors which they condemn? Yes, I believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds because they are in accord with the Word of God and also reject all the errors they condemn. Do you confess the unaltered Augsburg Confession to be true exposition of Holy Scripture and a correct exposition of the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? And do you confess that the Apology, the Augsburg Confession, the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the small card articles, the treaty on the power and the primacy of the Pope, and the formula of Concord, as they are contained in the Book of Concord, are also in agreement with this one scriptural faith? Yes, I mean these confessions my own because they are in accord with the word of God. Do you promise that you will perform the duties of your office in accordance with these confessions and that all your preaching and teaching and your administration of the sacraments will be in conformity with Holy Scripture and with these confessions? Yes, I promise with the help of God. Will you faithfully instruct both young and old in the chief articles of Christian doctrine? Will you forgive the sins of those who repent? And will you promise never to divulge the sins confessed to you? Will you minister faithfully to the sick and dying? And will you demonstrate to the church a constant and ready ministry centered in the gospel? Will you admonish and encourage the people to a lively confidence in Christ and in holy living? Yes, I will with the help of God. Finally. Will you honor and adorn the office of holy ministry with a holy life? Will you be diligent in the study of scripture and the confessions? And will you be constant in prayer for those under your pastoral care? I will. The Lord hail me to the power of the grace of his Holy Spirit. Congregation, as you are here as well, we turn and address you as well. Beloved in the Lord, Holy Scripture says, Obey your leaders and submit to their authority. They keep watch over you as men who must give an account. Obey them so that their work will be a joy and not a burden, for that would be of no advantage to you. You have heard the solemn promise of him called to be your pastor. Will you receive him? Show him that love, honor, and obedience in the Lord that you owe to the shepherd and teacher placed over you by the Lord Jesus Christ? And will you support him by your gifts and pray for him always that in his labors he may retain a cheerful spirit and that his ministry among you may be abundantly blessed? If so, then answer, we will with the help of God. Very good. The almighty and most merciful God strengthen and assist you always. Are you willing and ready to assume this public trust and responsibility? Yes. Pastor Walter Ramirez, I install you as pastor of Tabor Lutheran Church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with every good thing that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory and forever. Amen. Amen. Pastor, if you would take a seat, we would like to be able to uh, speak some blessings upon you this day. So we're going to hand this over. We're just going to start where we started with that. If you'd like to speak a blessing over uh, Pastor Walter. Thank you, Pastor Phil. Pastor Walter, on behalf of the saints, uh, who gather at St. Peter in Arlington Heights. We bring you greetings, blessings, and our prayers. Uh, the scriptures tell us in, in Matthew chapter 9 that Jesus looked out in the fields and he saw all the people who were 
uh, weak and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And he said, the harvest is already ready, but the laborers are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest field. And we're so thankful that you have answered his call to serve in this place. And I would encourage you and all of the people who call Tabor home to see this invitation, not just for one man or two men uh, who happen to hold an office, but as the calling for all of you, girls and boys and women and men. And your job is to disciple, teach, release, and empower them so that they could be uh, working alongside you in the streets of Albany Park to bring good news where they live, work, and play to the girls and boys and women and men who need to hear about Jesus here. So we pray your blessing upon them. We pray that Jesus would answer his own prayer through you. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I guess I get to go early in the, in the lineup here, Brother Walter. It's been, what, almost 10 years, right? And uh, we've been out there. Uh, I'm Eric from Yorkville. And uh, Nivia and Crystal and the whole family uh, here uh, in person and some online, I believe, and uh, the story about how um, you're an answer to prayer here at Tabor, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell the secret and say that Tabor is an answer to our prayers. Uh, Walter started uh, out there in ministry and uh, started some part-time work and uh, over the years have just hit obstacle after obstacle. We'd get success and then we'd struggle, right? And then success and struggle. And we pray to the Lord for answers. Uh, one time, I remember... Uh, a church came to you and offered you full-time work, and you said, uh, can I preach the gospel in its purity? And they said, well, you can preach it the way we like it, and you said, no, thank you, right? I remember that. And we kept praying. Uh, you took a bunch of different part-time jobs to make ends meet. Your family took jobs to make ends meet. Uh, I know that um, you would work nights. Uh, in cleaning houses and buildings, and then you would get up and care for minister for people and preach on the weekends. I got tired listening to how you did things, Walter, and I prayed. And so when he called up and asked if we could talk about how to do Hispanic ministry, uh, we talked for a brief moment, and I said, I can do one better. I can give you a professional. And uh, we prayed, and partnerships with St. Peter and the district and Tabor, faithful people here, and uh, Walter, my prayer for you has been answered, that you'd be able to serve the Lord uh, with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and for your family to be provided for. And I just praise God for that. And so I want to share with you uh, just Romans chapter 1, verse 16, and it goes like this. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to all who believe. And that power of the gospel has brought you here, and I know that that power of the gospel will continue to transform lives just as it has throughout your ministry. Brother Walter, thank you. Thank you for your dedication and faithfulness at Iglesia Luther on a Cross these past 10 years. Thank you for the encouragement you've given to me, the old guy at Cross. And Walter, may the Lord bless you, the Lord bless your family, the Lord bless this congregation, as together you seek to bring the gospel to the people of this community. And the verse I'd like to share with you is, I'm going to use the one from Isaiah, since we've been talking about Isaiah today, and it was my confirmation verse, and I pray it'll be meaningful for you. From Isaiah chapter 54, verse 10. For the mountains may depart, and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. The Lord be with you. Walter, I'm so glad you, you have been a, a prayer of mine for a whole bunch of years, because he wasn't supposed to be here. It's mm, true. <laughs> and this place wasn't supposed to be here, and you weren't supposed to be here, but God had this plan. And I'm so glad that you preached the, the word mm. so boldly uh, today. And I want to encourage you to, to preach that word, be instant in season and out of season. Yeah, because this is a season where people are not ready to listen. But we've got the word of God, and we've got the message of his love. And, and moreover than that, I pray that you might have joy and the blessing of being a pastor and a pastor here in this community, and, and that you might find every day when you wake up, 
just the joy of being able to say, I get to talk about Jesus. And God bless you and strengthen you every day in his love. Welcome to Circuit 11, Walter. I'm glad to have another brother who will uh, listen with a uh, gracious ear to my attempts to speak Spanish and correct it. <laughs> Today, hear the word from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. For our appeal does not spring from error or impurity or any attempt to deceive, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak, not to please man, but to please God who tests our hearts. Heavenly Father, pour out your Holy Spirit upon your servant, the spirit of boldness, the spirit of truth, the spirit of compassion and love, that he may speak your gospel unafraid, not to please men, but to speak the truth that heals, resurrects, and restores through Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Amen. Amen.